Good afternoon, members of the Queensland Film Festival. My name is Arushi Bose, and I have joined you today to discuss the film Rabbit Proof Fence and how director Philip Noyce was successful in provoking audiences to critically reflect upon Australian Indigenous issues. This piece will discuss the history of the stolen generation, narrative structure, symbolism and film techniques. 1,500 miles is a long way home, especially for three little girls travelling by themselves to Australia's vast, remote and arid landscape. Molly Craig, played by Evelyn Sampy, 14 years old, her sister Daisy Craig Cadible, played by Tiana Sansbury, 8 years old, and cousin Gracie Fields, played by Laura Monaghan, 10 years old, made the journey from Moore River Settlement, a now defunct internment camp notorious for the placement of Aboriginals, mainly children. Children were stolen from their families as a result of government policies with the hope for Aboriginal culture to die out. This tragic event in history is now recognised as a stolen generation. Through forcible removal, children were taken to different establishments. During the assimilation period, many Indigenous people were forced to leave reserves which were taken over by governments for housing and mining. As a result, rather than being assimilated, Aborigines were often forced to live on the fringes of society. Assimilation policies were mainly focused on children, as it was thought it would be easier for them to adapt to the ways of white society. As a result, the main characteristic of the assimilation era was the removal of Aboriginal children from their families. Between 1910 and 1970, a great number of Aboriginal children were removed. Half-caste children were the ones who suffered the most as a result of this policy. The idea behind it was that it would be easier for them to assimilate into the general community because of their lighter complexion. The impact of the policies left an undeniable suffering and trauma to many generations. The film is adapted from Doris Pilkington Garamara's book, Follow the Rabbit Proof Fence, in which she tells the events of her mother Molly. From the outset, Noyce alerts audience to the authenticity of events. Western Australia, 1931. For 100 years, the Aboriginal peoples have resisted the invasion of their lands by white settlers. Now, a special law, the Aborigines Act, controls their lives in every detail. The scene continues as they introduce the context to the audience. The next scene begins with a voiceover of real-life Molly Craig as she tells a story of what she and her family endured. The audience sees a pan of the land as the characters are introduced. Molly explains how she is labelled a half-caste, a term that refers to someone being of two races. Molly's mother introduces her to the spirit bird, who she says will always look after her. The family live in a small town called Jigalong, located in Western Australia. A.O. Neville, played by Kenneth Rannell, is the chief protector of Aborigines, a misguided ideologue, his nickname being Mr. Devil. He resides in Perth. He orders for the girls to be taken to Moor River Settlement and continue their lives there. The girls are taken from the family as seen through the emotional scene and make their way with a local constable. During their time at Moor River, Molly notices that there is a rain cloud and uses that as a chance to escape. She knows that the rain will cover their footsteps. This leads to the gruelling journey home. The three girls are representatives of real women who they portray. What is more is that they are the symbol of generations of children who are removed from their families. The silent symbolism plays a great part in the movie. The great vastness of Australian landscape is always overwhelming and frightening. Its impact on the three young girls must have been harrowing. Noyce effectively uses an array of film shots to demonstrate the ability to critically reflect upon Indigenous issues. One example is a medium close-up slow motion shot when the three girls are running through the land and the frame is focused on Molly. She notices the fence and the joy is seen on her face. This adds emphasis to the scene of their accomplishment. Another scene is when they are all at Moor River and Mr Neville calls Molly up to check her. She is reluctant to walk as seen through the slow movements of the POV shot. Mr Neville then bends down, towering over Molly. This scene showcases White's superiority. He acts in a condescending way. One other scene is at the end when real-life Molly Craig speaks about the events that took place later in her life. Extreme long shots show the vast and bare landscape. It emphasises the hardships that the girls experience and their loss of identity. A tracking medium long shot then shows Molly Craig and Daisy Craig Cannibal from a low angle that looks up in a reverent way. 
Throughout the movie, we are reminded that the position of the Aborigines is not merely caused by lack of government attention, but rather deliberately applied policies. In the movie, Molly's character represents fearlessness, kindness and generosity, which made her a perfect leader. Her life skills she acquired from her people allow her to navigate and survive in the vastness of Australian bush. The Moor River settlement was going through Great Depression and was most miserable. However, it was not the filthy conditions, the terrible food and neglect from people that disturbed Molly. It was a white sandy soil in contrast to the red soil of Jigalong and the trees that were unfamiliar to Molly. She was missing her land. She wanted to go back to her mother. She knew she did not belong there. Although the overall view was positive, some had opposing ideas. The controversial Australian journalist Andrew Bolt picked a bone with Moise's film. He refers to the discrepancies which put into question the whole story. He quotes Molly Craig as stating, that is not my story. He further claims that the movie is meant to fit a certain political agenda. Keith Winshuttle, Australian author, wrote a book called The Fabrication of Aboriginal History. In it, he questions the accuracy of the film and describes it as being grossly inaccurate. Philip Noyce's creation was warmly received by critics and audiences alike. It grossed over $16 million at the international box office and received accolades from the film community. The audience was exposed to a period of a difficult and shameful time in our country's history. It certainly played an important role in a difficult road to reconciliation. Thank you.